Hello guys, in this video I will tell you what I know about CLS and their algo. Some general informations you will need to understand what we're actually doing here. This course will always be renewed because CLS is really complex and has a lot of things they hold back. Central bank and payment systems evolve together. Many early central banks were founded as payments institutions. Ex-Maples include Barcelona's Tala di Canvi, Genoa's Banco di San Giorgio, Venice's Banco di Rialto, the Bank of Amsterdam, the Bank of Hamburg, and Nuremberg's Banco Publico. While some central banks were initially established as government fiscal agents, most famously the Bank of England in 1694, in most cases these institutions were soon drawn into a payment role. The rise of national central banking in the 19th and 20th centuries did not do away with the old problem of how to move international liquidity. Under the gold standard, in principle individuals could acquire foreign exchange by redeeming local currency for gold, and then shipping the gold abroad in order to acquire foreign currency. Few did so. Instead, bankers avoided those costs through a variety of financial instruments for interbank transfer, such as bills of exchange and bankers' acceptances. People could no longer redeem gold, and interbank financial instruments became the only method available for transmission. Meanwhile, technological advances rapidly decreased the cost of interbank transfer. Indeed, the most striking empirical regularity in payments is the worldwide increase in payments intensity since 1970. Judged by this metric, the nature of the payments business has changed more during the past 44 years than during the preceding two centuries. The increase in payments intensity mirrors the increase in financial markets trading, particularly trading in the markets for foreign exchange. But while the volume has changed dramatically over this period, the nature of the transactions has not. FX transactions are commonly thought of as instantaneous trades of fiat money, one central bank's liabilities against another. But at least up until 2002, they were simply faster versions of the old interbank transfer mechanisms. Since 2002, however, Central banks have increasingly detached themselves from FX trades by delegating their settlement to a private institution, the CLS Bank. Traditionally, banks use bilateral financial instruments to bridge different units of account. Now CLS can make those connections, and its account transfers replace the instruments. By operating simultaneously in multiple currencies, CLS is able to control risks of settlement in a way that no single central bank could. CLS may be the most unusual financial institution ever established. By day, it is the largest institution on the planet. By night, it hardly exists. It handles about half of the world's foreign exchange transactions, but it is also privately owned and operates with fewer than 500 employees. It was originally designed to do one job, settle international payments, and it does it with extraordinary efficiency. Pressure from the world's central banks more or less forced CLS into existence, but its position leads to extremely thorny policy questions for those same central banks. CLS came into being in 2002 as a result of regulatory dissatisfaction with traditional arrangements for settling foreign exchange transactions. Settling foreign exchange trades poses special challenges both because of the sheer size of the post Bretton Woods FX markets and because the underlying nature of foreign exchange creates risks that are resistant to traditional risk-limiting strategies such as netting and counterparty substitution. The initial impetus behind CLS was to move the payments used to settle FX trades away from traditional large-value systems, mostly run by central banks, to a specialized institution that could better handle these risks. Although in many cases there is no legal compulsion to use CLS, it has nonetheless enjoyed considerable success. The most recent statistics available on the CLS website indicate that CLS is currently settling a little over $5 trillion daily or roughly 50% of the world's daily FX turnover. Measured by value transferred, it is the world's largest payment system, surpassing even the largest single currency systems. Payments made through CLS occur as transfers on the books of a limited-purpose U.S. Bank, the CLS Bank, supervised by the Federal Reserve in cooperation with other central banks. CLS has access to the Fed's large value system, Fedwire, and also to large value payment systems in all of the currencies it operates in. Deposits, known as pay ins, and withdrawals from CLS Bank, payouts, occur in central bank funds and occur immediately via the appropriate large value, real time gross settlement, RTGS, system. Thus, CLS functions as a daylight bank with no deposits in its accounts overnight. Payments over CLS can be made by member commercial banks in any of its participating currencies, with about 45% of CLS payments occurring in U.S. 
$1,000. Approximately 75 banks are members of CLS, reflecting the immense turnover in the FX markets. Daily turnover at CLS is also enormous. Following days of heavy market activity, or U.S. Legal holidays, when two days of settlements must be compressed into one, the value of payments made through CLS can be breathtaking. The current record daily value is $10.3 trillion on March 19, 2008, in the wake of the Bear Stearns collapse. Each bank begins the settlement process by making its pay into CLS. These payments are made through RTGS systems in central bank funds. In the example, through Fedwire for the dollar payment and through CHAPS for the sterling payment. Also, you should know about liquidity in the markets. The food chain is in this order. Central banks, the market maker, working with CLS. Then interbank traders, they cannibalize lower tier banks. Followed by institutional traders, private equity large fund traders and investment bank, insurance funds. Then large fund traders, retail off exchange and independent investors. Followed by retail traders, cannon fodder or anyone not lumped in any group above. Liquidity is used so the central banks can make their profit out of it by destroying the big funds and retail trader. CLS helps central banks generate and provide this liquidity. The central banks then have only one job, to communicate their order to the CLS system and then everything happens automatically. When retail or fund traders enter the market, it will have no effect on why and when price moves. The movements and the draw on liquidity is already predetermined by the CLS bank and central bank payments. Everything after that is fodder for the central banks. The main business of CLS is settling foreign exchange transactions, but it has branched out into other activities. In early 2008 it launched a service, in cooperation with DTCC, Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation, for settling credit derivatives trades. By virtue of CLS connections to multiple large value payment systems, there is no technological barrier to using it to settle other types of trades as well. The CLS system is owned by CLS UK Intermediate Holding, and its operating rules are governed by UK law, while the account management agreement between the system's members and CLS Bank International is subject to US law. The CLS system began its settlement operations in September 2002 with seven eligible currencies, the US dollar, euro, yen, pound sterling, Swiss franc, Australian dollar, and Canadian dollar. At the end of 2018, it had 18 eligible currencies and 72 direct members. In the next video I will explain some timing parts of CLS. This will be the most important parts.